I'll start this video off with my sincerest apologies because the leaf blowers are going off again. Or I actually don't know if there are leaf blowers or weed whackers, you know? It's kind of the same thing here in Vancouver, especially if you're sitting in an apartment condo just trying to get by without listening to that buzzing going on outside. So I apologize if you hear any of that in the background of this audio here. But as I am home, as I am back here in Vancouver, I wanted to go over some of the updates of stuff I didn't get to talk about when I ended up going out on my trip. I talked about this in the last video, I'll say it again here, but the last weekend's worth of videos were all pre-recorded because... Yeah, I kind of had to go out there and spend some time with the fam, so I pre-recorded a bunch of stuff, went out, was not in the country, uploaded remotely, and now I'm back in Canada so I can actually talk about things in front of my own microphone. Let's go over onto Bruce Garriott's Twitter account and talk about some prospects in the senator system that are garnering interest in trades. Now, just because a player is garnering interest on the trade market does not mean that they're going to be traded at all. In fact, Pierre Dorian says that they're not going to get traded. He says there are five or six names that come up in discussions about trades. Ridley Gregg, Shane Pinto, Jake Sanderson, and Roby Yarventy are among the names that other GMs ask about. However, he does not want to trade any of those guys. And so, what I wanted to go over here in this video was prospect profiles for each of these four, how one of these guys is somewhat in a different territory than others, and why other teams are asking for them in trade talks. So, let's start out in chronological order in the tweet and go over Ridley Gregg and talk about his prospect profile for the Ottawa Senators. Gregg is 20 years old, 5'11", 163, as a left-handed center left wing, drafted in the first round by the Senators in the 2020 NHL Draft, 28th overall. Now, Greg was a guy that I thought was a pretty good steal for the Sens in this range of the draft. Not only was he ranked to go a lot lower by some scouting outlets, Elite Prospects had him at 84, he also was supposed to go a little bit higher if you asked TSN, you asked Craig Button, you asked Bob McKenzie, they all had him going in the 24-25-ish area. And the reason for that is because Greg was an absolute stick of dynamite out there. Let's just read the scouting report before we go over to the numbers over here. Outfitted with a seemingly bottomless gas tank, Greg's energy impacts all three zones. If there's a scrum, he's involved. If there isn't, he creates one. Although average in stature, few players in the draft bring a more refined physical game and all-out destruction. He is an intelligent defensive player, he attacks a pace offensively, and has a deft passing ability. Ridley Gregg is just an absolute stick of dynamite that is not afraid to go out there and cause havoc. He had 60 points in 56 games played with the Wheat Kings when he had gotten drafted, and this recent season he upped that up to 63 points in only 39 games. 26 goals, 37 assists, 92 penalty minutes in 39 games as well. He's an absolute agitator out there on the ice. And you want to talk about a Senators team that already has the likes of Brady Kachuk, for example. You add Greg into the mix, and all of a sudden, this team becomes a heck of a lot more difficult to play against. And it becomes a lot easier for other fan bases to go out there and start hating your guts. It was kind of easy to do that with Kachuk, but with Greg in the mix, it becomes way easier to do that, too. Greg honestly has, let's say, a middle six-ish ceiling where he could probably score up to 15, maybe 20 goals in a career year if he's lucky, and also putting up 30, 35 assists on top of that because he's just such a good offensive contributor and a guy that had six points in five games for Team Canada at the recent World Juniors. He'll be suiting up in Belleville next season, so we'll see what he's able to do in the AHL. He already had one game played with the Baby Sens in the playoffs, getting an assist in that, so he's pretty good. But it's very obvious to see why teams are asking about this guy, and it's even more obvious to see why the Sens want to keep him. Going over onto the next name that the Sens are asked about in trade talks, it's Shane Pinto. Now, we've talked about Pinto quite a few times in these videos, but let's go over him once more for the fact. He's 21 years old, 6'2", 192, is a right-handed center, signed till the end of 2023 on his entry-level deal. He was drafted back in the second round in the 2019 draft as a pick that a lot of people were somewhat concerned about. In 2019, this was the very first pick of the second round, and you can make the debate that you probably should have gone out there and selected another guy that had a higher scoring rate and a little bit more star power in terms of his draft rankings. Guys like Bobby Brink and Arthur Kelly have come to mind. They were selected in the draft right after Pinto by the Kings and the Flyers, but... Shane Pinto was a guy that absolutely exploded the next season after getting drafted with the University of North Dakota. 
There, as an 18-year-old, he made the World Junior team and posted up seven points in five games. He also was under a point per game in that North Dakota stint. His draft plus two year, though, he had finished off his sophomore season with the team, getting 32 points in 28 games, signed as the LC, and played 12 games with the regular Ottawa Senators. He had seven points in that process. Now, this recent season, he only played five games. He was injured for a good chunk of the year. It was super unfortunate to see what Pinto had to deal with. He had, I believe it was like two separate stints of shoulder problems, and he had a surgery which sidelined him for a long time, and now it's like, okay, we just gotta wait and see what Pinto becomes eventually, but just wait till he's recovered. We'll go over it then. Also for Pinto, he was an absolute beast on the face-off circle with North Dakota. He was, like, extraordinarily good. There were games where the guy went flawless in the dot, getting, like, double-digit face-off wins. It's kind of crazy just looking at what Pinto was able to do. Going over onto one of his teammates with the Fighting Hawks, though, let's talk about Jake Sanderson. Because, of course, there are going to be teams asking about Sanderson and saying things like, Hey, Ottawa, you guys got a lot of young defenders, a lot of young talent on that blue line. You might not need Jake Sanderson anymore, right? Because, I mean, you've got a pretty good amount of young talent already. What's one more really worth it to you? Problem is, Jake Sanderson is arguably the best one amongst the crop. He's 20 years old, 6'2", as a left-handed defenseman, signed till the end of 2024 on his ELC, drafted fifth overall by the team in 2020, taken two spots after Tim Stutzla, by the way. Sanderson was an absolute monster for the North Dakota Fighting Hawks this previous season, getting over a point per game. 26 points, 23 games played. He also suited up for Team USA at the Olympic Games, getting a point in the game that he played. And for Sanderson, you want to talk about a defender that just knows how to play the game properly. He is kind of that guy. He is so good with his skating. He has got a great stride. Great ability to rush the puck up the ice and create offense that way. He is smart in his own zone, he's good in the offensive zone, he can create offense, and he really does have all the makings of becoming a top two defender at the NHL level if everything goes right. Here's the scouting report on EP. Sanderson recognizes appropriate times to join the rush and pinches on opposing wingers well, sealing off pass options along the boards to prevent breakouts. He's got a quick wrister as well that can create havoc. He's calculated, disciplined, physical, and creative. There just isn't much that he can't do in the defensive zone at an exceptionally high level. The son of Jeff Sanderson, Jake is looking to become a mainstay NHL defender. It's taken a few years for him to adjust in the NCAA before transitioning over to the Ottawa Senators in the NHL, but we'll see where exactly he goes this upcoming season, and if it's anything like we've been seeing with his progression, I would not be surprised if he goes out there and actually dominates as a rookie. Going over onto the final name, though, Roby Arventy is a really interesting name to be included with the bunch that we had already seen. In fact, there are some Twitter replies to this initial tweet by Garyok saying, yeah, no, it's kind of interesting to hear Yarventy's name mentioned with that top tier of prospect talent. I believe that's the first time we've heard that from the organization, a Cas4 says. Yarventy, though, was a second-round pick taken by the Sens in the 2020 draft, 6'2", 20 years old as a left-handed left-wing player, signed till the end of 2025. This recent season, he played with the Baby Senators, getting 33 points in 70 games played. Certainly not an extraordinarily high amount of points, but what's really put Yarventy back in the map as a top-tier prospect was his World Junior performance. Last year, in 2021, the guy had zero points in six games. This season, though, playing on the top line alongside of Atu Ratu, and who the heck else was playing on the top line? Oh man, I've completely blanked out. Joachim Kemmel, that's right, the sniper taken by Nashville this recent draft. Yarventy had nine points in seven games played. He was super good, and he definitely showed off very well. We're all looking forward to having a better season out of Yarventy with Belleville next season comparative to what he accomplished this previous season. But obviously, with a World Junior Showcase like Yarventy had, it's easy to see why other NHL GMs are going out there and asking Pierre Dorian about this guy. But at the end of the day, Pierre Dorian's like, yeah, no, I just don't want to trade any of these guys. They're top-tier prospects in our system, and we're all looking for them to become stars at the NHL level. Yarvin T, I feel like he could be a middle six forward that maybe gets, let's say, 15 to 20 goals on a season if everything goes right for him. He's always been a little bit more of a goal scorer than a playmaker, especially during his time in Finland. It's just this previous season he started to assist a little bit more than we had been used to seeing. But either way, talk in the comments all your thoughts about Ridley Gregg, Shane Pinto, Jake Sanderson, and Roby Arventy. What are your thoughts about these prospects and other teams asking about them in trade talks? Only for Dorian to go out there and say no. If you're a Sens fan, how do you feel about these guys? What do you think they're going to become for your team in the future? And how happy are you that Dorian is saying yes to these names? Let me know your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this British Trolls 99. And 
Bye.